Any views, thoughts, and opinions expressed by the journalists and guests are solely that of the journalists and guests and do not reflect the views, opinion, policies, or positions of positive lifestyle management. <music>
dissatisfying in society is an escape or this the only way I know out. Okay. Um, that's why we always have to try to redirect that negative mindset. So how do we write, how do we redirect it? Um, the hard part is involvement, knowing, see when, you, if you see it, it's your responsibility to, to try to intervene in the best way that you think that you can um because when you don't you just enabling it and we got a lot of people that enable stuff not not even knowing that they enable it they just oh i don't want to get involved or it ain't my child or you know but they we all belong to each other especially our youth um so, when we're so that's gone, the everybody somebody you know, anybody and nobody syndrome then right mm-hmm that's what that becomes then because people seeing it, but no one is stepping forward. And so now you have, I'm and I'm just adding this to a uh, trauma. All the trauma that a lot of us have experienced throughout our lives. We don't even realize that it's trauma. We don't even understand the, the name for all the things that we know. We think that something that's abnormal it's actually normal because this is what we are seeing and witnessing on a day-to-day -day basis in our lives. So we think it's normal. We don't understand that it's abnormal. So mm -hmm. when the youth are, they born in poverty, they are, they see racism all day long. They see class discrimination. They don't know, actually know what it is, but they are going through it. No, so that brings me to a question. Yes, would that circumstance in concerns of those traumas develop complacency in the person or apathy? That's com that's it, could be both. Mm -hmm. It could it develop into could complacency develop. and apathy because some don't understand what it is, and those who understand what it is go back what the sister said, they see it. But they say, well, it's not none of my child. I don't want to have nothing to do with it. I'm just going to go on with my life until it hits them head on. Then they want to say something. That will become, that's apathy right there. And those who don't see a way out and just accept it as their conditions, that would be complacency. That's complacency. Okay, mm -hmm. so that ties back into what the sister was saying about when you see, when you see a child going through something to make it your business to do something. That's initiative exactly so the the youth that's coming up in this day and time are complacent or have developed apathy because of the generation before them lack of initiative true okay i just want to make sure i'm, I'm getting an understanding of what's being said right now yeah they're coming like not breaking the cycle um and we got a bad about not breaking the cycle so and see, I was once one of those youth because I did what I seen. What I seen in the community, that's what I adopted. But did I understand what I was adopting? No, because I'm looking at it as being normal because this is what I'm seeing from those around me. So I don't know that it's abnormal. Mm. I don't understand it. Okay, so you you were un, under the subjective will to where your True. environment was pretty much molding your thought process. Exactly. Because this is what I seen on a <laughs> daily basis. I woke up, I seen it. All during the day, I seen it. At night before I went to bed, I seen it. On the television, I seen it. On the news, all I seen was, just think about it. How mm -hmm. often on the news are they reporting something good? I don't I, I ain't watched news in so long because of that reason. It's always something negative on the news. This person, then you have to mind. I'm from a major metropolitan city. I'm from the city of Chicago. So the majority 
it's a 30 minute news it's a 30 minute news broadcast and within that 30 minute oh, is it an hour it's an hour i think it's an hour now it's an hour of news broadcast so within that hour how many of those minutes are dedicated towards something positive yeah i say a good 10 minutes maybe if so and the rest of so if you can include that 10 minutes they're gonna put the weather sports what's going on in lifestyle whatever some one particular person doing that's positive in the community and everything else is going to be dealing with politics and negative and and, and and violence and crime that occurred in the community right so now mm -hmm. we're going to get now we're going to move to the next stage where i just mentioned politics it said the new generation of desperate and downtrodden pursuers of the american dream are tired of being lied to they are tired of being misled and misrepresented in politics mm. they're tired of it because you think about the politicians right mm -hmm. most politicians they only come around when they are uh, running when they run in the campaign if yeah, they run it yes yes but the one thing that we're not doing in the community those of us who are in the know at this particular point in our life and i'm talking about us as a as a as a whole not as individuals we're not enlightening ourselves and the community on the importance of politics we don't have nobody representing our entrance in politics we're not pushing forward the candidates that's going to go and represent the things that we need for our community. Okay. This, this brings me to something that's written in the teachers. It tells us to teach the, the youth about our new direction and our new concept. So with what you're describing and that disconnection between the generations, is that the reason why that was given to us in the, in, the, in the teachers in order for us to connect with the youth exactly because think about it mm -hmm. the teachings that you're talking about this come out in 1982 this particular the piece that you're talking about i was 15 years old who were the youth i wasn't that, youth. Youth. that yeah. was me when the new concept come out in 1981 i was 14. So the new concept was written for my generation. Me, I was that, I was the youth that they were talking about at that particular time. So now we got to look at the youth today, like the sister a little bit. She worked <laughs> with the youth. So now we have to be able to take the evolution of the new concept and the blueprint and instill these teachings in the youth the same okay. thing that she does when she wake up on a daily basis she's instilling them guiding them giving them something to be proud of yes see okay. they are tired of being exploited manipulated and abused by a system of empty promises that's all They've been hearing empty promises. Mm. You know, so, and I'm uh -huh. looking at that sentence by me being in, in the city of Baltimore, right? You know, we had the uprise of the Freddie Gray situation. And there were a lot of promises made to the city by not just politicians, but community activists as well. And it, it got the youth to campaign behind them. Then when everything was said and done and they got what they wanted politically out of that situation those promises were never fulfilled at all exactly so it was it was empty promises it was just yep. it was they they were stroking the emotions and the ego at that moment so it was they was dealing more exploiting their emotions yep. that's what they did That's, that's a real life statement. I lived through that. I watched that happen. Okay. 
Excuse me. Go ahead. I yield the floor. Okay. So, uh, say the the new generation is looking at the swollen hands and feet of their overworked, underpaid parents. They are asking, why should I spend my entire life working for a system that nearly guarantees that I will end up poor, broken, and full of despair? That is in bold italic. That is a statement that the youth is making because they're looking at their parents. They're looking at the people that's getting up every day, going to work. They they still poor at the end of the week, can barely make ends meet. Uh, they back, they breaking, they doing this back breaking work, you know. And and at the end, at the end of their life, what most people, what most of us have to do, we got to do donations to bury our parents and our loved ones. Facts. Mm -hmm. You know. Then there's so many people that spent all their life working that they work themselves almost to death to where their medical condition and medical health, like it's almost depleted. They drain their life for us working and got nothing for it. Mm -hmm. And you can see that with, with just again, like I live in Baltimore. So a lot of times when I'm on the bus stop or at the train station, whatever the case may be. I see a lot of people roughly in their 60s, 70s, you know, on walkers with canes, ankles swollen, feet swollen, arms swollen. You know, some people say they come from diabetes. I don't know what medical condition causes it. But I'm talking about the validity of that statement in this blueprint and how real that is. And these people have worked their entire life and they can barely even walk now. And they, they, and I don't want to say begging for change, but any help that you can give them, they appreciate. So yeah. what child growing up would want to follow that path? Exactly. Uh, for this new generation, yep. the old concept, sister, you want to add? Uh-uh. Go ahead, bro. For this new generation, the old concept has no answers. And it seems that the answers of society are designed to keep them locked in perpetual poverty and prison. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It said for the new generation, the old mm -hmm. concept has no answer. And it seems that the answers of society are designed to keep them locked in perpetual poverty and prison. So they saying, man, listen, that old stuff, man, we're not trying to hit no old concept. We're not trying to hit none of that. There's no answers there. Where is the answers in there? Ain't no answers. They are looking for answers. Go ahead, go lie. Yeah. You, you touched on something right there, my G. Because I, I was sitting back, again, personal experience. Um, I don't want to call my my elders old, but a lot of old folks just say, baby, just pray about it. It'll be all right. Just say a prayer. Everything going to work out. And a lot of stuff didn't work. You know, I watched my grandparents pray. And what they prayed for didn't answer any of our problems. Mm-hmm. You know, and I can liken that to the old concept, you know what I'm saying, of the family structure. So where we had, you know, a lot of prayers, you know, and a lot of other information that really serves no purpose in this day and time. It won't get us anywhere but a common bond to dwell in the past. And if you dwell in the past, you repeat the past. This is what I'm gathering from that little context of that sentence. Man. Let me read this one more time so that the audience can understand exactly what is being said. For this new generation, the old concept has no answers and it seems that the answers of society are designed to keep them locked in perpetual poverty and prison. Okay. <clears throat> TP, that brings me to something, right? 
Yes. Because we were talking earlier and we spoke about the youth and the new concept being taught to the youth. And you explaining the year that you got involved with the organization. Okay, the new concept was written for your generation. Yes. So that means when you got involved with these teachers, it was at the end of the era of the old concept. Yes. So because I I became part of the uh the organization in 1978. I was 11. That's when I became a part of. So that was like the end of the the bgd era it was coming close it was coming to an end it was coming close for to the old concept was coming close to an end okay so when you, you were first coming in and it's bad because I'm, I'm trying to word this the right way i know you got a, a, a the tail end of the old concept i know that because of the time frame you came in so i can only ask you this when you were coming in and reading the old concept how did you look at that concept in comparison to the day and time you were living in? How did I and see I that concept? Go ahead. Well, I, I will go finish your question, then I'm gonna answer. Yeah, I'm, and I'm asking that because they said the new generation saw no answers in the old concept. So you being part of that new generation coming in and catching the tail in the old of the old concept, comparing that old concept to the day and time you were in. What did you see as a parallel or the contrast, the reason why there were no answers? Because it was based upon a negative. It was based upon negativity. I Mentally, all we was concerned about was protecting our, protecting each other and looking at everybody else as being our enemies or oppositions to us. There was no educational, there was no educational growth. There was no economical plan no political plan no social plan no spiritual plan it was none of that one no plans with one no plans to it okay that makes sense okay so, well my uh, question is in the perpetual poverty so that basically means that you just lack in education um individuals are able to secure good paying jobs um was that something that you know was a factor in your community in that time yes because we was poor but i didn't understand that we was poor because i had never seen nothing outside of my community everybody in the community was poor we had to go borrow cups of sugar we had to take notes over to to the friend's house to, to get something. Then their children would come over and bring notes and get bowls of rice and get food. And we had to take a note down to the store to get stuff on credit. And then, you know, so we didn't we didn't know, though, but we thought we thought it was normal. We didn't understand that we were poor. But then as I start getting older. And I start seeing the drug dealers and the pimps and the players and the pushers and the cool cats, the hustlers in the community, they was having things. I wanted those same things that they were having. Uh -huh. You know, that's what I wanted. See, they were going to prisons, coming out. And when they was coming out, it was like a rites of passage. They was coming out with rank. They was coming out with notoriety. And so we figured that in order to get this same rank and notoriety, we had to go through that same rites of passage. You had to go through the prison system. Unbeknownst mm -hmm. to us, that was totally wrong. I didn't know. So while in prison, when I first got in prison, it was books in there. I'm talking about educational books. I had to learn, they had to, uh, uh, they start having me, the older brothers, they start having me read certain books, understanding the, uh, the education aspect, why education is so important, going to school, getting a GED, hanging out in the law library, doing, they used to make me go to the law library because I didn't want to go because I was wild. I thought that in order for me to be solidified, I had to be wild. I had to, like, I was tough. But I had That's to go through that. 
Yes. <laughs> That's that lawlessness. That's right, sister. You are absolutely correct. I was just about to read that sentence. <laughs> yeah. So as I start growing and developing, I still, the new concept was taking hold. It was taking hold because they was making us do it. And they was making us do it. It was mandatory for us to do it because they wanted something different for us. When you got people in jail, they got 75 years to a lot to, to 100 years, 100 years to 200 years, life sentences, 80 years, 90 years. And here we coming through with three and a half, four, five years. We were young. But then as we start getting old in prison, the books start changing. They start taking out all the educational books. And then you start seeing an influx of urban novels hitting the shelves. People start er ordering more urban novels from the, from the bookstores and everything for their personal use. So now you start seeing everything changing. So it was a, it was a plan behind what they were doing with us. I never viewed it from that angle. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> so, sorry. oh, go ahead, sister. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just saying, like, okay. So let me ask you this question. Um, how should I put this? When you were exposed to the new concept, how long were you under the teachings of the new concept before the educational books? Were taken out of the prisons and the influx of Donald Goins and Iceberg Slim and that transpired. This started happening like 90, 91, 92, 93. Now I'm old enough to now I'm older now. So now you as I'm getting older, I'm seeing what's going on working in the law libraries. I'm starting to see all of the educational books disappear. I'm starting to see more youngsters coming in the system. Because we were the young coming in the system. Now, as I'm getting older, I'm starting to see a whole lot of more youngsters coming through the system. So now when they start coming in, they're not getting them educational books no more. They're getting these Iceberg Slam books and Donald Gorn book. And then what they did, they attacked the literature because at first it wasn't against the rules and regulations for us to have the literature. Then they start making it against the rules and regulations for us to have the literature. So now... The literature, people's got to start hiding the literature. So once the literature, people didn't want to get caught with the literature because they was sending you to segregation for giving you a year around the board. That's a year, year segregation, a year good time, and a year C grade. So they was, they was punishing us for bettering ourselves. So now <laughs> okay. if you look at the system today, now you, you can see the results of what they implemented way back then. <laughs> okay. Excuse me. Oh, wow. So basically what you're expressing is when the new concept took a hold and began to mold people's lives, change the direction they were going in, change their mentality, the first thing that the, the systematic prison or whatever you want to call that, high power, whatever you want to call that system, did was attack the educational program. That's right. See, because now what happened was we stopped looking at other organizations as our opposition or our enemies. Mm. Now we start to discover who the who the actual enemy was. Who is the enemy? Anyone who supports the who anyone who supports the condone the systematic warehouse and destruction of our brothers are in essence the enemy. So now we start seeing that who the enemies were. Mm. So now mm. they got to what they got to do, they said, hold on. They focusing on us now. So what they start doing was this here. All the older, more experienced men that was in prison with us and in the female prison, the older, more experienced sisters or women that was in the prison, they start sending them to medium security and minimum security institutions and leaving a maximum security field with a bunch of young men with a lot of time who didn't know how to defend themselves mentally or emotionally they understood the physical aspects of it but they didn't understand the mental and the emotional war of uh uh uh, uh combat against administration so 
based on that experience, would you say that that's it's safe to say in this day and time, the rejection of learning or the reluctancy to learn is a direct effect from that counterattack? Yes, a lot of it, it played, but now this occurred all over the United States. It occurred all, look at any prison throughout the United States. It was a concerted effort throughout the United States. Because you know, every year or two, three times a year, the directors of the Department of Corrections in each state has to go to D.C. and they have conferences. And they discuss at these conferences moves that they are going to make uh new technology that they's coming in you know now mind you you remember they start to call them calling up security threat groups mm -hmm. see that took that was mind you now that was not never in the system until the 90s roll around you start hearing security threat groups. Security threat group? What the hell is it? We became security threat groups. We was a threat. Us as groups were threats to the security of the institutions. That concept took place and took effect throughout the whole United States of America prison industrial complex. You just taught me something new. Me too. Yeah. So <clears throat> that would be why it's referred to as an intellectual war. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And an intellectual revolution. Okay. Yeah. Forms of different of different form of slavery. Yep. All right. Yep. Hey, says, I do apologize for taking us so off course with the blueprint reading, but bro, I had to ask you those questions. No problem. That's what we're here for to teach. So, it says uh, it is easy for lawmakers and textbook psychologists to tell people how they can make it by working for the system instead of against it. Because if you're working for the system, you're going to get the same thing that your parents and their parents and their parents and their parents before them got. They want you to stay on that same hamster wheel. If we stay on that same hamster wheel, we're going to get the same results of the generations before us got. That's a perpetual cycle. That's that perpetual cycle perpetual mm -hmm. cycle or system of slavery, educational slavery, economical slavery, political slavery, social slavery, spiritual slavery, all forms of it. And it ain't got nothing to do with just race in itself. Mm -hmm. It's that social economic status that they don't yes. want us to have. Exactly. Mm -hmm. However, most people's was the direction in life is based upon what they see, not what they are told. Mind you, whenever they put trinkets out, let's look at let's look at television. They put trinkets out for us, right? You can yep. have this here. You can be the fifty cents. You can be the Jay Z's. You can be this person. You can be that person. And what are these guys talking about? How they took drugs to get to where they was at. Oh, but you gotta ask, yes, but then you got to ask yourself. It's been many people who have sold drugs. And how many of those people turn out to be Jay-Z, 50 Cent, Nas, and anybody else? I don't know too many. Out of all the dope dealers that you know, I may know. No. What you me. get, that's right. What you get is a bunch of people that either in the in the cemetery with a prison number or somewhere sleeping in squalor, sprung out on drugs. 
Yep. Reminiscing, Mentally reminiscing dead. about what it used to be. Yep. Or you have the ones that did sell the drugs and you did make it, but you wanted to straddle the fence and now you're not here. Yes. You helped destroy the community, but now you don't want to come back to the community to help correct you, what you helped destroy. So let's just like, I'm going to use me. I created mayhem in the community, not only in my community, but in all communities across America. Was I there personally? No. But what's the thought? The same thought that I had is the same thought that was in a lot of other peoples around the United States of America. So mm -hmm. I, that thought, the thought that I had helped destroy all, a lot of communities across the United States of America. That thought. So now you know what I'm doing? What's Sitting that? right here with my brother Blaylen and my sister a little bit and trying to open the eyes to right the <laughs> wrongs that I helped create. I helped create a lot of those wrongs. Now I'm trying to right them by exposing the aging provocateurs, the rats, the COINTEL pro, the peoples who do not have our best interests at heart, recognizing who our enemy is and more important, what our enemy is. That's what we're doing right now, brothers and sisters. So in essence, that would be the transition from the old concept to the new concept. Yeah. Growth and development. Mm -hmm. Okay. So more, uh -huh. as a as in taking initiative, right? The first thing would be to realize not just that you were wrong, but the effects of your wrong. Right. And then take responsibility for those effects and an accountability by trying to make a change in it. Most definitely. Okay. Because a lot of us in our community have the brothers and the sisters in the community that looks up to us. So in our teaching, it tells us to teach the youth about our new direction. Mm -hmm. Because they're looking at us. Our every action, behavior, and attitude, it is being watched. When we don't even know that we're being watched. My cousin told me, he said, man, cuz I used to sit in the window and watch you, man. I didn't know he was in the window watching me. Right. I didn't even have a clue that he was watching me as a as a as a as a young man. Because I was trying to keep things away from him. Because I'm not seeing him physically, but I'm not seeing him sitting in the window watching what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And that mm. had an effect on him. And look at how many other people's I had effects on. Look how many other people's ran across me inside of the prison system that I was sharing that thought with them. And then they was taking that thought and taking it back out and sharing it. And other people sharing their thoughts with me. So it, it, it was a, it was that. It was going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay. <laughs> Say, moreover, <laughs> the lifestyle that society demands. Say, moreover, the lifestyle that society demands in exchange for the promise of economical security, economic security is viewed by the majority of young prisoners as being a lie. When they get in the system and they got to spend the next 20 to 25 to 30 years in the system, then they start seeing that that demand that society for the lifestyle that we're trying to live, it was a, it was a complete lie. A total lie. I've spent over 33 years of my life, a total of 33 years of my life inside of a penal system. Whether it was 
juvenile or adult, whether it was county, state, or federal. So I'm telling the audience what I'm saying from experience. I'm not no textbook psychologist. I am, a, I am an expert on the life that we're talking about. I live that life. I am that life or I was that life. Their logic is that no matter how much money poor people make, the price of bare necessities <coughs> rises in direct proportion to their income all right let's look at this today i was just all about right. to do that let's look at it today <laughs> people's are making 18 19 dollars an hour right yep mm -hmm. and they can barely make ends meet hallelujah that's my you see what i'm saying now, just bread, imagine ten dollars come on you go to the gas station you paying three dollars and fifty cents and in some areas especially if you're living in a major metropolitan area area you paying close to four dollars or over four dollars for a gallon of gas huh. so the more money that you think you are making the higher the cost of living is so in reality you still in the same position that you started in yep <laughs> yeah uh, under the illusion that you moving forward mm. And that's where that's improvised what communities, huh? That's that's where you get your improvised communities from, right? Like, yeah, um, the healthcare bed uh, for certain economic or geographical and economic status people. Um, it fall even in with fertility. Yes. So let's think about mm -hmm. this. Hold on. Think about the health. Go, bro. Yeah, I want to make sure I heard it correctly. Did you call that an improvised community? Mm-hmm. Okay, I just want to make sure I heard that word correctly. I got to research yeah. that. Well, I can tell you what it is. It's a, like just a small community, 3,000 people or less, um, that's economically disadvantaged. Um, they exhaust riches. Um, I said earlier, fertility, that's why I, uh, African American communities have more plan, Planned Parenthoods because we we our abortion rate is high, and then in the white communities you have more fertility clinics because they struggle with infertility. Um, so you get you get real deep. Yeah, that's oh, in the way oh, the fashion oh, oh, oh. in the making. Let me let me ask this question. I, am I right or am I wrong with what I just heard? Correct me. You said the European communities has more f fertility community, I mean, uh, facilities, because they are trying to have babies. And in the Asiatic communities, there are more parent planhood uh, facilities or programs in the community because of abortions. And just producing. We, pro we, 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 we don't really... Studies show that African American women don't have as many fertility problems conceiving and having babies, but ca ca Caucasian women do. Oh, okay, okay, I right. I got you. So now they, so that's that's eugenics. Mm hmm. Oh, okay. Woo. that was a, yeah. That's that was the way heavy, That was a heavy one right there. Yeah, that was a heavy one there. Woo. He said, the logic, okay, I read that. It said, consequently, in the average young person's view, to follow the examples of their parents slash grandparents mean to submit to a life of social economic slavery. Mm -hmm. So what they do then, and I was one of them, we tune our parents out. We tune our grandparents out. We stop listening to them. Like, man, I'm not finna be going through what y'all going through. I'm gonna go get this money this way. 
I want to do it this way. Mm -hmm. So the very peoples in the community that we're supposed to be protecting, they not trying to hear it because they see no, they not understanding. And we don't really have nothing to give them or to offer them besides social economic slavery. You know, I honestly believe based off that sentence that I'm gonna use myself in this example where I miscommunicate with the youth is that they think I'm coming to try to show them how it works. When I got no results from how it works because the lifestyle I chose took me off that path. Right. I'm coming to show them the ways that don't work because I'm seeing the approaches they're taking are similar to the ways that I once took. And I know those ways don't work. So I have to now realize to take on a different approach towards the youth to get them to understand. I'm not trying to tell you the path to go down. I'm trying to make sure you don't go down the paths that I have gone down by making those same decisions. Exactly. Does that make sense what I'm expressing? It makes a whole lot of sense. It says, under such pretenses, the fulfillment of the American dream become impossible for the young person to logically access, to assess. They can't, they can't compute it. Like, man, how you going? I'm not trying to be no economic slave. I'm not trying to be no educational slave. I'm not trying to be no social slave. I'm not trying to be no political slave. I'm going to create my own way. As they say, and, I ain't to be working hard all my life. So this is where the new concept comes in at. Because they don't see the old concept as working. Okay. So that means that the new concept has to come in to get them their guidance. The education is important. Education can get you that economic wealth that you're looking for. It can put you in that social economic class so now let me ask this question sister are we trying to get in a social economic class or are we trying to get in an education economical political social freedom the are freedom. we trying to, the freedom but then, because you got those, but then you got those who do just want to be in it for the wrong reason I so, got some people that's claiming they Republican, but do you, like, my sister, we debate all the time on her, like, how can you be a Republican? We've never been a Republican a day in our life. We don't even, we not even, like, got the same beliefs as they do. Now, watch this here. Let me take you back. I'm going to do a, his, a history lesson. Mm-hmm. In 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation was signed, right? And the Emancipation Proclamation meant that any state that was in rebellion of the Union, that means that all the slaves in that particular state were free, right? Mm -hmm. So that means that all the southern states that was dealing with the Confederacy that the Union didn't have control over, right? Those slaves were released. They was free. But if the union had control over that particular area, the slaves were not free, according to the Emancipation Proclamation. That was signed by a Republican. In 1865, the 13th Amendment came into existence, freeing the slaves. That was signed by a Republican. Our peoples were initially Republicans. Democrats were the racists. Democrats were the, it's the oldest political party. The Republicans came from the Whig party, W-H-I-G. They were the younger party. If you look at going, coming on up, we was Republicans all the time during the 
1860s, 70s, 80s, 90s, early 2000s. When you start getting it, not 2000, not early 1900s. When you start getting around to like 1933, 1940s, up through this time, that's when a lot of the Republican start turning democrats and they became known as the dixiecrats and these dixiecrats at that time were the strong thurmans and all those guys that that was the the uh uh they were the democrats strong thurman up out of um he did now a racist dude up out of uh What's wait, uh, South Carolina? Was it South Carolina? South Carolina. They were the Democrats. Was the was the party that was for the segregation and all that. We be start becoming Democrats up under Roosevelt and the New Deal. When the Roosevelt deal? came, the New Deal in in nineteen thirty three. That's when all the social programs was coming into an existence, and as we start benefiting from the new deal turning democrats all the democrats did what turned republicans that's when strong thurman now became republicans they was initially democrats jesse hams them were democrats who turned republicans so they actually they literally flipped the script they flipped the script to get away from us. Uh, okay. So we started out as Republicans. Okay, so hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Like I, I do I remember stop. here re remembering that in, in school somewhat. Now, let's go to 1863. Uh, do I have it in my dictionary? I'm gonna go in my dish. I don't know if it's in the back of my dish today. Y'all know I keep this. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. You you look up whatever you're looking up, right? Yeah. But what I just gathered, right? Because I was born in the 70s. You know what I'm saying? I just I just looked young. So when he said yeah. 1993, I'm like, okay, that's why I'm so Democrat yeah, crazy. Like hey, 19. <laughs> 1863 that's what i meant to say if i said 1990 Eight. it should have okay. been 1863 when the emancipation proclamation was passed <coughs> okay so no, he said they was start trans um transferring in 93 right or uh -huh. like the ma the majority flip was in 93 no that was in no that was in the, that was in uh 1933 when the new deal came right because you know oh, the, the country the country went through the Great Depression. Okay, yeah. And then when the country went through the Great Depression, I think Woodrow Wilson, if I'm not, let me look him up. Let me look him up right quick. I'm thinking okay. Woodrow Wilson was a Democratic president during the time of 19, during the world, during the first world, during the first world, uh, world war. Then you uh, had. Maybe y'all ain't hearing what y'all saying. What's that? I, I'm listening to y'all, right? Yeah. Okay, we it's been stated that in 1933, a new deal was made that flipped the script on everything, right? Yep, to bring the country and, out of depression. Okay, got that, Paul. That means that from 1933, there is a completely different social history study a social history timeline that existed prior to that so yeah. they basically rewrote history and then started teaching us the 1933 on up version of history because mm -hmm. they make us think they make us think that we've been democrats all the time that's not the truth so the foundation of anybody born after the new deal on an educational level is all based on lies deceit a delusion i ain't gonna even say delusion i ain't gonna even say a lie a deceit because it's right there it's history 
It wasn't taught in no school. Well, I can't say it wasn't yeah, taught in Alabama. They, they say, like right now, they're not even teaching no type of black history in school. Right. Like, so they, 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 they wiping it out. But if you go and look, just look at it from the political landscape. If you're mm -hmm. looking at it from the political landscape, guess who else was a Democrat and flip Republican? Who? Ronald Wilson Reagan, whatever his name, whatever Ronald Reagan name Ronald is. Ronald Reagan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of them was Democrats that flipped Republicans. When, cause the country was, the country was suffering when they brought in Franklin Delano Roosevelt when he became the president. And so when he became the president, they had to come with a lot of social programs. And all those social programs opened up the door for our peoples to start receiving assistance. And a lot of our people start voting Democrat. Wow. So, I, so we became basically Democrats up under Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Okay, Franklin Roosevelt. Mm. Okay. So now, once we restart a lot of the, the lot of the, cause you, uh, the Democrats control the House, and they control the Senate. Mm hmm. For a long time. For a long time. Mm. See, this makes so, me reanalyze the condition of our of, of our environment, of our people, like why we are the way we are. And I don't just mean as Democrat and Republic, I mean mentally. Guess who else was a Democrat? Flip Republican. Who? They're trying to send him to prison right now. Trump? Yeah. Uh-huh. Bro, it's so this is the reason why. We have to find our candidates, make groom our candidates, and get them in office that best serve our purpose. Watch this. This is no knock. This is not anti-Semitism. This ain't got nothing to do with none of this. Let's think about the Jews, right? Do they care about what political party a person belongs to? Nope. They don't care about none of that. Only thing they care about is do you represent our entrance? They are in both the Democrats and Republican Party, and they are independents. They everywhere. They are not just in one spot. And they have a consolidated vote. And they have a consolidated vote because when they vote, they vote in their interest as their people. They vote in their interest for their people. Uh -huh. They not voting okay. their interest on what my little group. They voting for their people, man. I don't care about none of that. What you gonna do for our community? They give money to the Democrats. They give money to the Republicans. They give money to Independents. They give money all around the board because this is they controlling it. Cause they everywhere. And I condone that. I, you know, I that's I can't knock that. Like that's what you should do when it comes to your culture, your heritage, your people, because you're supposed to preserve your heritage. That's what the new concept is teaching us. Mm -hmm. Don't focus on a political party. Focus on understanding the importance of politics. Well, see now that. Which goes back to what you were just breaking down about 1933. Then that means a lot of us as a collective group needs to be completely re-educated on the social dynamics of our community and our, for lack of a better term, environment. Most definitely. And that is the reason why the blueprint is here. It's giving it to us. Point blank in the raw. Mm. Bruh, do you understand what we did with asking people, do they want a copy of the blueprint? 
you know, I just know hey, the work was being done. Hey. We just gave them the key to freeing their dome. Because it's right there in our face. The answers are there. You don't see the blueprint speak on no political party, no Democrat, no Republican, none of that. What it speaks on is organization. True. That's what it speaks on. So now we organize. And when we organize, then we put forth the people that we need to go represent our entrance. So we're basing, for context um, purposes, we're basing the organization of ourselves upon our, our, the laws of existence and the principles of growth and development. Yeah. So once we properly understand how to love ourselves as individuals and the collective, once we properly understand the life that we should have as individuals and as a collective, once we have a clear understanding of how to be loyal to the laws and principles that govern our heritage, then we can begin to have the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to push forth exactly what we need to do. Talk to me, bro. Talk to me. Okay. Talk to me. I'm just me. trying to make sure I'm, I'm grasping this, right? Because it's a lot of information in a short time. And hey, man, listen, bro. I <laughs> always tell people, man, when you're dealing with this blueprint, you are dealing with the teachings on steroids. The blueprint is the teachings on steroids. The black and white, <coughs> the blue and white is the black and white on steroids. The black and white was preparing you to understand the blue and white. Okay. <laughs> mm. Excuse me. So I would I would word it like this for my comprehension. The black and white was the discipline necessary for us to unite around the blue and white. Say it again. All right. Because it the was teaching white, I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay. Right? I'm the, about to say it again. Now. The black and white was the, it, it, it was it was guiding us. Think about it, bro. It was guiding us to get around the blueprint. If we would have took the, if we would have truly understood the black and white, it would have been easier for us to transition into the blueprint. That's okay. why the administrations, that's why the, the prison administrations start attacking the black and white. Oh, okay. So what we're saying is the black and white were well, all the negative syndromes and negative thinking we had to come out of in order to fulfill the blue and white. Exactly. You cannot understand the blue and white if you don't understand what the black and white was telling you. The pain and the trauma. Yes. Okay. Cause they was trying to get us in a discipline and in a disciplined mindset. See, discipline is a necessity in all things pertaining to development. Thanks. So they was trying to get us mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally disciplined to understand the blueprint. Because they had observed what came from the lack of discipline and unity. Yes. Now observe what comes from unity and discipline. That's but, why they fear of being united. Because yes. they know they come back to slavery. Once they got knowledge and learned that working together and not against each other could get them to higher places, then... That it's same thing with right now. Like now, they try to pin us against each other. Watch this here. Who is the most 
hated person. Say it again. That is, who is the most hated person that they hate to talk about from Southampton County, Virginia, during the time of slavery? In 1831, there was a slave uprising, a revolt, led by one named the Reverend Nat Turner. The Reverend Nat knew what? How to read. He knew how to read. And he took the Bible and was having meetings. And like he was teaching the slaves to be submissive. But he was taking the Bible and using that Bible to organize. Yeah, I got to excuse me, be right back. You know, to organize. And as he was organizing, that's when they had the slave revolt. And they killed 50 some slave owners, the men, the women, the children. They killed, they just went through Southampton County, Virginia. That's why they hate to talk about Nat Turner to this very day. That's why they do not want us <laughs> to learn, sister. Because once we learn who we are, then we can stop being who we are. Mm -hmm. We got to think yeah. about our ancestors were the birth pains for us. Like yes. coming out of slavery into not being in slavery. There was a, a transition. See, a growth and development. That's what it was. That's exactly what it was. See, we are a special group of people with integrity and dignity right yep and in order for us to become a reckoning power of people reckoning meaning one that has to be considered we have to take on the new concept of organization everyone mm -hmm. must do their share everybody has a responsibility but we make up the organization as individuals who have come together as a collective that means we all have to learn what our talents and our skills are and use the blueprint as our guide, as our roadmap to get us to where we need to be at. I totally agree. You know, so it's deep. So it let me, uh, deep. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, hey, I didn't think that we was going to be this long or going to get this deep and say, Let's face it, the materialism of the American dream motivates people to get rich. And in most instances, crime is committed by those who are chasing the American dream, the desire to get rich in one form or another. Now, he used, the leadership used the term get rich, 50 cent had an album out called get rich or die trying right did. what are we doing right now today a get lot of us are trying. getting rich getting not even getting rich die trying to get rich die trying to get rich that's it bro chasing the american dream which is nothing more than an, than an illusion a nightmare a trap and we're trying to do it from an illegal point of view. That's why they have all these different programs and all these different shows. And, and they're showing all this, you know what I'm saying, this narcotics and scams and this and that and this and that. These are trinkets that are dangled before our eyes. They're dangling <laughs> them before us. Oh, you should have never said that word. <laughs> Now, I'm going to tell you something. Talk to me. Most people don't understand what I'm about to say. And when I use this name, they might cringe when I use this name. But I bet you it's one nation of peoples who understand what I'm about to say. That's the Jews. The most important person 
in Hitler's regime was Joseph Goebbels. Because Joseph Goebbels controlled all the propaganda that came out of Germany. Everything that the German people seen, all the radio shows, whatever they had at that time, Joseph Goebbels, the newspapers and everything, because there wasn't no televisions then. It was newspapers and radio. Joseph Goebbels controlled all the propaganda. So whatever was said about the Jews, the people believed it. And that's what we're doing right now. We're chasing this, this illusion, this propaganda of the American dream. And we're losing. We're eating it up and we're losing. So let me ask you this question. That being expressed in that context, right? It's safe to say that the media outlets today are using propaganda to put us in a place of complacency. Exactly. Because watch this. Most people are paying attention to what? They pay attention to shorts. Shorts are one minute or less, right? Yeah. Some, I guess, is two minutes, three minutes. I don't know what it is. TikTok. They're paying attention to it. So look at look at the things, the views that people are getting for BS. Mm -hmm. Look what they're paying attention to. Are they going to pay attention to the blueprint reveal? Hmm. Are they going to get the real now? Now we just, we giving them real information that can help them free their dome. Hmm. But let me get on here and get to talking some nonsense. Um, on some BS. Let one of us get on and get some BS. Watch how many views we get. So they pushing it. Because this is what, this is the trash and the garbage that our people wants or they think they want. Yeah. So let, let's go with that, right? And I, I'm going to bring this up for an example purpose. Let's just say you did a video, a controversial video on something. And the numbers went through the roof. But you do a segment like this, some valid real life information that can help people. And the views aren't that high. If you're chasing views, your mentality would be automatically to go with what you know gets the most views. So you exactly. become a tool of perpetuation for that negative stereotype, that negative syndrome. You're a tool in the you're, you're a cog in the, in, in the wheel. You part of that. Mm -hmm. mm. You're so, part of you helping pushing it. All because you chasing views or what they yeah. what they call it, um clout or whatever the case may be. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of media outlets could be actually manipulating numbers to trick people into falling to that syndrome. Yeah. Because for all we know, like this video, when we put it out, it could be doing numbers higher than we think. But because they're trying to push us in a certain direction, they don't reveal the true numbers to us. That could be. I'm not okay. for sure. I don't I don't understand it. Maybe the sister can tell us about that. I don't know. I mean, with the social media stuff, like once you get if you are coming to professional mode or become a content creator, you 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 a lot of people are paying for that paying for those views or paying ten dollars for this and paying fifteen dollars to get you because they I, i'm in professional mode so they try to send me stuff all the time pay ten dollars and get a thousand more um view like like so people you can like yeah you can manipulate it definitely yeah. okay okay so anything else y'all would like to add so we're gonna get these pod and shouts out at uh each one of us gonna give our uh pardon shouts, our solo. We're gonna we're gonna start with the sister uh a little bit. But first I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Thank you all. You know, it's just been a great deal. Uh you know, when we get on here, ain't no telling where we might go with it, you know. So uh, but it's all part of our growth and development maturation. So we're gonna start with the sister a little bit. She give our pardon shots. 
I enjoyed being on the panel tonight. Um, I hope y'all were as enlightened as I was because I got with a whole bunch of knowledge that I didn't know. Um, blessed, be blessed, and plenty much love. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and watching this. I'm thankful to be a part of it. And I have to say this. After this show, I realize how much re-education I have to do. And I'm hoping that others realize how much re-education they have to do for themselves. And let us begin that path to relearn what we should know to make this vision a reality. With that, plenty much love. Uh, I want to thank our, our hosts. Uh, a little bit blailing and once again want to thank our, our beloved sister sister cole she like i said she wasn't able to make it tonight uh, but we 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 tried to hold it down for you sister well, i don't know if we did a good job but we, we tried to hold it down for you um peoples it's our job to learn who we are we can no longer sit back and continue to be illiterate we have to learn the true essence of who we are and what we are about. Let's continue to move forward. Let's continue to love each other. And let's continue to be one with each other. And on that.